If you ask us what is the most dangerous site in Europe, we would most probably point at Sellafield. No, they aren't hiding aliens here or making superhumans, if that's what you're wondering. Instead, it's a former nuclear facility telling a tale of wasted human labor and promises. This facility, or should we say this town, is located close to Seascale at the coast of Cumbria, England. Sellafield comprises more than 200 nuclear facilities and more than 1,000 buildings. It's a huge but cramped place. 13,000 people work in a 3.7-mile square space surrounded by razor wire. Sellafield has its own roads, its police force, the Civil Nuclear Constabulary, and its own fire service. It also has a railway station and, until September 2001, its visitor center was a major tourist attraction visited by an average 1,000 people per day. The 85-year-old aging walls of Sellafield have been tasked with storing 80% of the UK's nuclear waste, and that's not all. This site has an interesting history. Formerly known as Windscale, it was built in 1942 as an ordnance factory during World War II. It was in this very war that the US developed the first nuclear reactor and its massive power was displayed to the world with the use of two atomic bombs. The explosion caused a flash that could be seen over 100 miles away. Estimates range from 110,000 to 210,000 were killed in the initial explosions and many more would later succumb to radiation poisoning. The war ended with a victory for the Allies, including Great Britain. However, the international climate was still hot. The US had already become a nuclear power and Russia was still in the race to become one. To solidify its security, the UK also embarked on a nuclear program. Sellafield was chosen to be the site for Britain's first atomic reactors, known as Pile 1 and Pile 2. These were not built to generate electricity, but to produce plutonium for the nation's independent nuclear deterrent. Construction was carried out at breakneck speeds as political leaders pressed scientists to complete the project quickly. If you've enjoyed this video so far, hit the subscribe button to show your support. We release two videos each week, bringing you the hottest news in the engineering world. As a result of this hard work, Britain was able to explode its atomic bombs by 1952. The UK became a nuclear power and won itself a permanent seat on the UN Security Council, thanks to its nuclear engineers and scientists. Given the pressure on delivering the project, no thought was given to the nuclear waste generated and how to dispose of it. Soon, Britain had to pay a hefty price for its short-term policymaking. Uranium fuel rods that were burned inside the reactors came with an aluminum cladding. This aluminum was a waste that had to be disposed of. However, it became 10 times harder as it had to be removed in a highly radioactive state from the two reactors as their fuel was decommissioned and their plutonium extracted. So everyone decided to dump it in a building called B-41. The B-41 was a concrete storage facility with six compartments. The inspiration was taken from North American silos where farmers store their grain. Similarly, the B-41's a nuclear waste silo where all toxic waste is thrown from above. The waste included fuel rod cladding, graphite from the reactor cores, chemically active waste, irradiated metals, wood, paper, and anything else workers wanted to dispose of was slung into B-41. By 1965, the silo was full to the brim with 1,600 tons of intermediate level waste and was shut down. This is what became Sellafield's history, a trash bag for hazardous nuclear waste dumped in concrete silos, artificial ponds, and sealed buildings. Throughout history, Sellafield's worn different hats, starting as an ordnance factory, then a site for Britain's nuclear program, and then a nuclear power station. As everything in this world has an expiration date, Sellafield is no exception. These structures are degrading over time due to age, the sea air, and the radiation itself. If they degrade too much, waste will seep out of them, poisoning the Cumbrian soil and water. A decommissioning program is underway to clean the debris, destroy the silos, and fill the ponds with soil. Thousands of people work round the clock to achieve this monumental task that requires both time and truckloads of cash. According to estimates, Sellafield will be fully decommissioned by the year 2120 for 121 billion pounds. This means that most of the crew members won't even be there to see the fruits of their hard work. In 1954, Sellafield was being expanded to accommodate a nuclear power station. Four Magnox reactors were constructed to supply the electrical energy to Britain. The whole site became known as Windscale and Calder Works. At the time, nuclear energy was seen as a cleaner alternative to burning fossil fuels. In 1954, Louis Strauss, the chairman of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, predicted that nuclear energy would make electricity too cheap to meter. That forecast has aged poorly. But anyway, Sellafield became the world's first nuclear power station to provide electricity on a commercial scale to a public grid. It was officially opened by Queen Elizabeth II in 1956. However, its success was short-lived as one of the worst nuclear incidents happened here. 
a fire broke out in one of the nuclear reactors, resulting in a large release of radioactive fallout. Surrounding dairy farms were contaminated, and large amounts of the iodine-131 isotope, which can cause thyroid cancer, were released. The UK government tried heavily to censor the reports of this incident to not harm the nuclear program. It has since come to light that small but significant amounts of the highly dangerous radioactive isotope polonium-210 were also released, though knowledge of this was excluded from government reports until 1983. In 2007, the 50th anniversary of the fire, new academic research concluded that the amount of radioactive fallout released was twice the existing estimates, and it spread further east than thought. The study concluded that 240 people were given cancer in the surrounding areas, and that 100 to 240 of these cancer cases were fatal. The Windscale Fire remains Britain's worst nuclear accident, and the worst nuclear accident in the West. The release would have been much worse if it had not been for the filter at the top of the reactor's exhaust chimney. It's hard to believe that such a hazardous site sits on an otherwise quiet part of the countryside. Among the other dangerous sites inside Sellafield is an artificial pond called B-30. Piles of old nuclear reactor parts and decaying fuel rods, much of them of unknown age, line the murky, radioactive waters of the cooling pond in the center of B-30. On the bottom of the pool, there are pieces of contaminated metal that have dissolved into sludge that emits heavy and potentially lethal doses of radiation. It's roughly the length of three Olympic swimming pools, and because of its state, it was renamed the Dirty 30. Sellafield hopes to drain the pond by the early 2030s and demolish it by the 2050s. The B-30 is just one of many locations that have to be safely dealt with. Its neighbor, B-38, contains approximately 9,000 cubic meters of solid waste retained in water-filled compartments. In 1974, the coal miners went on strike and the entire country's coal plants were shut. As a result, there was an enormous burden on nuclear stations to keep the nation's lights on. With the increased power generation came the heaps of nuclear waste. When B-30 was first put to work, it was designed to keep the fuel rods submerged for only three months before reprocessing work was carried out. But as the coal plants were shut, more fuel was spent than what could be safely reprocessed. The pond quickly filled up with the added nuclear waste and was later abandoned as new facilities were built. In 2014, the Nature Journal, The Ecologist, released a leaked set of photos of the B-30 and B-29. It showed pictures of hundreds of nuclear rods stored within cracked concrete housing. Both ponds contain a mix of fuel, sludge, and other miscellaneous nuclear waste. Overgrown seaweed and seagulls can be seen bathing in the pond. This raised concerns over the overall safety of the public and professionalism of Sellafield employees. However, it's not just the British public concerned over this issue. UK's neighbors like Ireland and Norway seem to be pretty concerned as well. When Britain decided to discharge radioactive substances like technetium-99 into the sea, it angered both nations. Iceland's environmental minister also wrote a letter sharing concern over marine life in the Irish Sea. At the present moment, Sellafield doesn't generate nuclear energy anymore, although it's a storage site for the majority of the UK's nuclear waste. As part of the decommissioning process, cleanup work has already started in the 80-year-old silo. When it was constructed in the 1950s, it wasn't built with the thought of retrieving the waste inside. In essence, it's a locked vault with 3,200 cubic meters of intermediate-level waste ILW for more than 50 years. That's what makes its decommissioning harder than it already is. Not to mention that it's also situated in a highly congested part of the Sellafield site and surrounded by a maze of pipelines and other sensitive buildings. In the 1980s and afterwards, the silo underwent several upgrades to ensure the concrete structure could continue to provide safe containment and shielding for the waste. To remove the heaps of dangerous waste, the experts seemed to have come up with a plan. The first step was securing the silo with the installation of six metal doors. These doors reduce the risk of contamination when waste is removed from inside. In 2017, the gates were installed and six holes were cut on top of each compartment allowing access to the waste for the first time in 65 years. The next step was to put a giant mechanical hand inside the hole to lift out the waste. The retrieved waste is placed into a specially designed stainless steel box and loaded into a shielded transport flask. These boxes will then be taken to a more appropriate storage site inside Sellafield. In August 2023, the first waste was retrieved using a crane. By lowering a grabber into the compartment, they lifted out the first pile and repackaged the waste. This milestone's a big achievement in reducing the environmental risk of nuclear waste. However, the speed of the process has been likened to a teaspoon picking up rubbish from a trash bag. It can't be hurried up as there are numerous safety guidelines to keep in mind when dealing with such an extraordinary task. After all, it's hardly a claw machine in an arcade for child's play. 
As you might have guessed, storage of this waste is only a temporary measure. There is an international consensus that the safest permanent solution to manage higher activity radioactive waste is geological disposal, which involves putting the waste beneath several hundred meters of solid rock. This repository would be called the Geological Disposal Facility, or the GDF. This is already the chosen approach in countries including Canada, Finland, France, Sweden, and Switzerland. Some of these countries are well on their way to developing their GDFs. So until the UK can come up with its own GDF, which is expected to be ready in 2050, the retrieved nuclear waste will remain stored in an above-ground facility at Sellafield. There are around 420 nuclear power reactors currently in operation around the world. Around 200 nuclear reactors are expected to begin the decommissioning process by 2050. If the nuclear industry is expected to thrive, there needs to be a permanent solution for dealing with its waste instead of passing it on to future generations. What do you think about Sellafield's decommissioning? Are they doing it the right way? If you liked today's video, show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. We are committed to releasing two weekly videos, so stay tuned for our next upload.